social media platforms in particular make it so easy to simulate a relationship without actually having to go to the trouble of forming one. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. (laughs) And inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And it is just past our birthday. At recording, bum, yes bum, it is. Bum. And in fact, Elliot's story today starts with a message that he received on his birthday that was less than birthday-ish, I shall say. But we we hop into all sorts of really great lessons on um, how you actually start and grow a relationship, whether it be from scratch or to grow a community in a way that doesn't actually detract something by ad, by trying to add something to it. Yes, and hint, don't fake it till you make it. <laughs> Well, you know what I will say, it, it contrasts with another message that we got on our birthday, although I don't think he knew that. Um, out of respect, I'm going to call him Mr. Junior, <laughs> because his first because... name, because, well, here's how you spell his first name, um, P-L-A-S-S-E-D-E. And I'm a little stumped. Uh, I, like, I can yeah. only imagine that I will exclusively bastardize that if I say it. So yeah. we'll just leave it at that. Um, but he's the newest member of our Facebook group, and he right. hails from Brazil, and he sent us the most lovely message. It absolutely made my birthday. And I know I sent it on to you. So first of all, love the people from Brazil. <laughs> we actually have a whole a whole thing coming yes, up on that do. in a couple yeah. episodes. But uh, just one quick last thing there before we hop into the story. Uh, if you're enjoying the show, please tell a friend, um, share it on social media, just show someone how to do it on their phone. We are spending our birthday month trying to grow the audience. And what we know now more than anything is that happens when you, our favorite listeners, just tell someone about it. So please do. So here's my story. It was September 1st, a mild day. It was September 1st. <laughs> and what's special about September 1st, I Elliot? I'll tell you what's special about September 1st. It is my birthday and the birthday of others Me. you it is our birthday it is our birthday it 10 is 10 years our, apart yes. i will shamelessly point out but <laughs> <laughs> but september 1st is in fact both of our birthdays right so i was doing what and as we did a crappy job of any kind of celebration or yeah, oysters we and cocktails like horrible. we normally do um maybe we'll do an episode about it that's right that's right so At least i, I assume that's where you're going i still haven't given up hope on the oysters and stuff but anyway so i did what has become a hobby of most people in our age which is watch social media and watch the greetings come in and say, oh, I haven't heard from her in a while. Oh, that's really nice and Aww. whatever on, on various platforms. But one of the greetings really caught my attention. And oh, my gosh, um, I can really see a couple ways this is going to swing right now. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to I'm going to read it verbatim because I need to do it justice. OK, uh, it says, happy birthday, exclamation point, Elliot, and then five dots. Please add us to your process server's vendor list. Wait, what? Wait, no, so, <laughs> wait. There was no in between between no, the, those well, the, two things. The in between is like <laughs> five dots. six dots, five oh, dots, no. whatever. Happy birthday, <laughs> Elliot! Please add us to your process server's vendor list. Our company are the process server experts since 1987. Can I meet with your senior paralegals or main attorney to become your number one preferred process server agency? Whoa. Thank you. And then there's an email and a and a oh, uh, my phone number. Goodness. And ouch, that yeah. hurts. So that, so that caught my attention because I <laughs> really, as you well know, I wouldn't have been offended at all if this person didn't recognize my birthday. It's not incumbent upon the general public sure. to recognize my birthday, even though we are connected <laughs> on LinkedIn, which is a totally different subject. But even though we're connected on LinkedIn, it doesn't matter to me. I don't keep track of, you know what? Like if he's going to send you a shameless plea to use to become your number one whatever yeah he didn't have to say happy birthday or she no know. no they um so i don't keep track if if he didn't say anything i wouldn't have and he wanted to send me an advertisement or a solicitation in a week i wouldn't have gone you know what i'd actually consider this except for the fact that a week ago he did not recognize my <laughs> birthday Fair so it has nothing to do with that but I was taken aback by the fact that somebody would just kind of use the birthday thing as like this perfunctory, hey, here's a reason I'm going to contact Elliot and I'm going to ask him for business. And it really rubbed me the wrong way. Well, I would say that that's the case, even if they did what would have made it slightly more palatable, say like, happy birthday, and then some kind of 
cartilage between the two, maybe even to acknowledge, like we don't really know each other, but LinkedIn just said it was your birthday. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to tell you about my company, at least if you would have, like that doesn't make it totally better, but at least acknowledges (laughs) the like whiplash between the two, like happy birthday, here's my ask. Like, maybe, you know, right. You know, it kind of reminds me of, um, the disconnect on various types of communication. So like when, uh, when my wife, when Nikki was out and she was staying over at a friend's house, but she was going to come home that evening, but she decided she had some wine. She wanted to stay over at a friend's house and it was fine. So she texted me back and she said, Hey, I'm staying over at, at Corinne's tonight. And I texted back. Okay. Oh, we've discussed this. We have discussed on this. podcast. Episode. Yes, yes, we've discussed this before. And so I was at fault. And I tell this story to my public speaking class. And it's <laughs> inevitably the women in the class who are like, no emoji, <laughs> nothing. There's, there's no, there's nothing that kind of insulates that message or that softens the message. And here with with LinkedIn, you're saying that had he put something in between, like, Hey, buddy. I know. <laughs> okay, I didn't say something creepy. I just said something. To like I know. I know. You know. I wanted to wish you a happy birthday, but I also <laughs> wanted to come to your attention so I could be your number one process server. Yes, or or even be like uh, annoyingly sort of chintzy or whatever, like cheesy, clever about it. Like happy birthday. You know, I want to make your this next year your best one by taking the the hassle out of your process survey. I don't know, some way tie it, like somehow have a transitional sentence. But like, as you said, it, it's, it's like there's this tiny little opening and somebody uses it to come in and then take up a lot of space in a weird yeah, way. And, and so it got me thinking about when do messages actually devalue Mm. The, the sender in mm-hmm. some way. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like consumables. Like they say that celery is negative calories because it takes more calories <laughs> to eat than it does when you... In, than it, so that it happy birthday was like a negative it's, Yes. Like, so it's, it's yeah. like a, yeah. a negative caloric. I'll give you another example. This wasn't of communication. Um, and welcome, by the way, to all of you to our stream of consciousness episode. So um, <laughs> there used to be a car dealer that would advertise and they had this voice uh, coming over the radio, of course, saying... I'd like you to come to my good friend, and they named the car dealer. But they never identified the voice. So normally you would say, my oh. good friend so-and-so, this is yeah. Joey well, Roberts. This is Joey. And, and, you know, and whatever, like, my yeah, good yeah. friend this. But it's a commercial endorsement. So it's a faceless, but headless, it's a faceless, nameless, nameless voice. It's made to seem like. It's a, a referral. You just don't know from whom. Yes. So it's made to <laughs> seem like it's some sort of commercial endorsement that mm-hmm. you should follow. But it's a car dealer structuring their ad around a bait and switch theme. Yeah. Yep. And so to so me, where does the ad actually become a detract? Yes. Yes. Because well, because here's the funny thing. If I take if I take your example, the shameless pitch for your service, which. Let's be honest. If that had come in in and of itself, there's a 99% chance you would have ditched it unless you were really, really, really unhappy with your process server or whatever. I don't even know if you have someone who does that. Whatever. Not the point. Um, we do. Chances are, yeah, okay. But. Chances are you're going to, it's just, it's not how you're going to get that business usually. Same thing for, I had a, I had a friend actually use my birthday a few years ago to pitch on my Facebook timeline, her a network marketing thing. It was like, happy birthday. You know, if you'd like to try this, like, da, 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 da. And I was like, ew, <laughs> which she did so that, you know, other people would right. see. It was just so like, ew. But, you know, and that, if she tried to pitch me on that, I probably would have been like, thanks, but no thanks, regardless. Yeah. So you were already sort of sitting at a no, but then you add in that extra bit where you tried to, like you just chose a sort of disingenuous, gross way to make a sense of connection. And it actually makes it worse. Like I'd, I'd rather somebody actually start the email with, I know we haven't talked since high school, <laughs> but, you know, would you be interested in this business thing? I would actually answer that with a genuine thing, but. I don't know, I don't. but I do like the way you said it when an ad becomes a detract, mm-hmm. because that's that's the way I see it. And I do think so. So to go with your example of somebody, because Nikki was talking about this, actually, she had a number of friends from high school who had 
it seemed all at once joined various companies, whether it's Roden and Fields mm-hmm. or whether it's some be- they became nutritional coaches or whatever they called nutritional coaches. So she started getting these outreaches from the small town in Oregon she grew up in. Hey, haven't talked to you for a while. How you doing? And she always knew that that was just followed Here up. Here it by, comes. Would you? Are you interested in health coaching? Right. Are you interested? Which, in to be fair, that is a result of bad coaching from from their leadership. No, you know, that's like, exactly that, that right. That is what people, because it's worked for someone. So somebody says, try this yes. thing and it'll work. And like, maybe it does sometimes and maybe it does enough that it's, maybe it's a great tactic. I don't know. I just find it really distasteful. Well, that's the, that's the whole point. And she and I had discussed it because we both share that. We, we both find it distasteful. Look, if you want to reach out and solicit me for business, that's one thing, but I don't like the faking the personal Right. connection. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. I, I would I would be thrilled if someone said like, hey, I know we haven't talked in 30 years, but I'm trying to start this new thing. And so I'm like reaching far and wide. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I'd be like, cool. Thanks for the honesty. You can absolutely respect that. <laughs> you probably don't remember my face, but here, you know, we you know, like, and I'm not sure I remember you, but Facebook says we know each other. <laughs> but so that's, that's when the ad becomes a detract. And I, I, find that social media platforms in particular, make it so easy to simulate a relationship without Mm -hmm. actually having to go to the trouble of forming one. Yeah, I hesitate about whether I want to actually be specific about this one because it is a local business. But there was a uh, there was a a series of ads. I don't know if you'll recognize it or not. There was a series of ads in town for a gym where um, and it was the one I went to is actually an all women's gym. And uh, they have other ones that are co-ed. But I went they had several that were just women only. And they have this series of television ads of it's the uh, you know, the Lindbricks. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they had this series of television ads where it was it was the two of them because they are a couple. They own the company. It's legitimate. Yeah. It's a family owned business, so that part's not disingenuous. Right. But everything, and they're all holding the the bricks, which I, is kind of oh, cheesy. Yes, yeah, yeah. But they kept doing the thing from like um, they would send out these emails from Uncle uncle whatever his name is victor. Um, uncle victor so like as a part of a women a women only gym i was getting these emails from uncle victor says really? just, and i was like Ew. Yeah. <laughs> and i think they're trying to you know trying to really build on the sort of like family business thing which i totally get um but it just it always it always did the opposite for me. <laughs> yeah, it's well, I can see that. It's the presumed relationship. And and I like I mean, well, I've never like I've seen her at the gym. I've never seen his face in person. So to get an email from Uncle Victor was like Yeah, yeah and I you know, and and I belong to one of their gyms and it's it's presumably not the all female one. Not not that I've noticed. I've no <laughs> well, if it is, I've noticed a disturbing amount of men in there, particularly populating the men's locker room, which right, is yeah, large. Okay, so not whatever. that one. So um but but yeah, in there, it's all business. And I appreciate the all business. They, I like that it's a local business. I like supporting local businesses. But And to be fair, this was like 12 years ago. So they've, I am quite certain that they have, they have you know, matured. And, and so right. But, but to your point, I, what I appreciate is I like knowing it's a local business. And that's wonderful to me. But I don't like the presumed forced relationship yeah. of your best friend or yeah. uncle so and so or Victor. especially for, a, for especially for a female gym like I, there's just all sorts of layers of weirdness there and calling anybody uncle but that's a that's a different story um yeah i think that 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 it's bad enough on LinkedIn. Actually, we, I don't know if you get them as much as I do, but um, on LinkedIn, especially, I constantly get these things that say, Jody and Ellie, you know, like, uh, I either I would be a really fantastic guest for your mm-hmm. podcast, or this person would be a really fantastic guest yes. for your podcast. We get, I get at least three to five emails a week. Um, and it's always just so funny because they're like, they'll be perfect for you, you know, the, the perfect guest. And but I'm like, have you listened to? to the podcast like <laughs> well i'll get i'll get those i'll get the podcast i will get emails from people again it's the the fake relationship i i really love your website and i respect so much the how your practice has grown i've taken the liberty of redesigning your website and if you would <laughs> Um, just reach out. I'd love to have a brief conversation with you about that. So, and I get those at least once a month, Yeah. but it starts out with the, I love what you've done with your practice and I really respect your reputation, all that's And, and it's, 
those sorts of things, when I look at it, I'm like, you don't know who I am. Well, so that that to me is what this all boils down to is there's this difference between I think there's there's somehow two, these two things have become conflated, which is which is trying to create a sense of connection, in theory, authenticity with with presumed closeness. But if it's not authentic closeness, if you don't actually have a closeness, you can actually, interestingly, I think, I mean, I was joking before, but I think that's another way to look at it. You can create that sense of closeness by being honest about your lack of closeness. You know, sim- somebody simply saying like, look, I know, you know, we don't know each other from Adam, but I really think this might be worth a look for you. I, I at least don't immediately put up my No, wall. it's a genuine outreach. Yeah. Of somebody yeah. who's trying to pretend like they know everything about me when clearly they don't. Um, I know when I first started at the architecture firm, I was uh, I was answering the phones and I used to because Jim Greaves was the main principal at the time. And he either went by Jim to people who barely knew him. And then his real friends called him Jimmy. No one on the planet called him James. No one oh. ever, ever, ever called him James. And so these very aggressive financial planner kinds of young dudes, you know, and they're the guys who like call all day long. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, hi, I'd uh, like to speak with James. And uh, I'd say, oh, really? And, and I mean, who am I asking? <laughs> oh, it's a good friend of his. You just you just put me through to him. And, and they would try to like aggressively pass through. Yeah. But the minute they said James, and then they were trying to fake all this, this, you know, like closeness. But I knew immediately nobody called him James, especially good friends. So I would just sort of toy with them and then eventually hang up or pretend to take a message. But interestingly, if some young guy called and said like, look, I know it's your job not to put people through, but is there, is there any way that I could talk to him? I probably would have found a way to like put him through. Now he would have shut him down in 30 seconds, but at least I wouldn't have stopped him. (laughs) No, that's true. I might've put him through. But I do take more offense at the veneer of a relationship where none exists. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's really for me what, what. To me, it borders on violation. I mean, when, when, when we were talking about that, like sort of happy birthday and then literally with no break jumping into it, it, to me, it, it felt like, I know I cracked this joke before, but to me, it felt like, you know, somebody's walking by and like your window's a little bit open. So they just like climb inside and you find them in your living room. Like there's no, it's like, wait, that was not an invitation. Like you just use this tiny little sliver of an excuse to say a thing to then like just help yourself to, to like, I don't know. Right. And so, so we've talked about one way to get around that, which is to not do it, to say, look, (laughs) I don't know you at all, but is there any way I can talk to, to Jim just for, you know, five minutes? I just want, so there's an honest approach. The other thing that strikes me is you've got a lot of businesses out there. Like we talked about Victor and Lynn Brick. And I know that they're a local business. They built themselves up locally. They do care about the community. Mm -hmm. But it's such a cliche to say, well, we're a community this or a community that. So the task ahead of people to actually show that they're committed to the community, I mean, it's a longer thing to say we care about you when they don't know you. Yeah, but I think that's I think part of the problem with the, trying to tie that in is is that the, a lot of the things we're talking about is is how to initiate a conversation or how to I mean, I brought up the whole Lynn Bricks thing, but that was, you know, they're trying to expand a relationship. But to me, it all comes back to the only place you can ever grow a relationship or a community is from exactly where you are right now. You can't, it's, it's really interesting. There's a, um, this is a little bit of a leap, but I think it still makes sense. I think we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> There's a book called Tribal Leadership and it's, it's these different layers of what they're calling tribes. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of like there's a lot of other stuff in the book, but I find this piece the most interesting is, is there are these like four or five layers that are sort of, it's almost like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. These are sort of layers of development from the very center, center of the layer is like everything sucks. And that is you primarily find in like prisons and gangs and we're like everything in the world sucks. And then it sort of elevates to, um, I think it's like, uh, I'm okay, but you suck. And then there's like, then there's like a we're okay, but you suck. So at least there's sort of a we and a they. And it's sort of these levels of greater community. And what's interesting about this, the reason I bring it up is not all of that, but it relies heavily on listening to the language of someone or a team or an organization to identify what level they are currently operating in. And here's the fascinating thing. And I think this is absolutely true. People can only hear you, and I'm making sort of air quotes, hear you one layer above or below where they are. Mm, Okay. And so you can't, if someone is in that 
deepest level of, or I think of it just for ease sake of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If somebody is at a survival level kind of thing, they can't hear your enlightenment talk. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I feel like these relationships and growing these communities is very similar wherever somebody is right now. I mean, it could be that if I had spent tons of time, like that whole Uncle Victor thing may have been a leftover from when they were a tiny little community where everybody genuinely had a relationship with Victor. Maybe that was the inside joke that he was Uncle Victor. Maybe that was funny. I wasn't there for that. Whatever, wherever that came from, it may have been someplace very genuine. It wasn't my genuine experience. And so- just recognizing that you have to meet people where they are and grow the relationship from there, I, I think is is kind of ties all those. No, I think it does. And, and so if you go one level up, so if you we started out talking about the person who doesn't know me, mm-hmm. right, doesn't know me, but is kind of faking it. But if they went one level up, which is okay, I don't know you, so I'm not going to fake that I care about you because I don't know you. Mm-hmm. But I can talk about the fact that I care about certain things you care about. Yes, like if he would have said, like, you know, you may have a fantastic processor or whatever. I can't remember what it is now. You may have a fantastic one of those guys, but if you're not super happy, I'd love the chance to show you it can be better or something like that. Because right. then he's he's speaking to something he knows you care about. He can speak to that. He can speak to. What makes a really good process server and why I would care about that. Yep. Because he doesn't know me, but he knows that I care about my business and he cares about my business in a certain respect. He mm-hmm. wants to give great service to my business. And so we have a, a meeting ground there. So yes, I do think they can level up. It's it's presuming to be on a certain level when you're not mm-hmm. and not recognizing that, that I think that's when the ad becomes a detract. So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. (laughs) That is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Loving of ways. Lovingly snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. (laughs) Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story.